Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give thanks to him. Give thanks to him. Come on, come on. I know I'm fat full of food, but I'm never that full not to give him thanks. Not to praise his name. Oh, yes, the turkey was good. Oh, yes, I put the dressing on with it. But I give him thanks, even if I didn't eat turkey. And I didn't have no dressing. You know why? He's awesome. Come on. God is awesome, game. Lord. Come on, we know this.
the praise. Yes. Yes. Give him praise. He's an awesome God. Glory to God. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Hallelujah. Continue to praise. I said, continue to praise him. We were just singing about an awesome God. If you know that you serve an awesome God, you ought to give him an awesome praise. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'm sorry, I needed to take that time for me.
Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to thank God. Hallelujah. Where would I be if not for your grace? Carrying me in every season. Where would I be if not for your grace? You came to my rescue. And I want to thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Grace like a river. Oh, where would I be? Where would I be if not for your grace carrying me in every season? Where would, where would I be if it wasn't for your grace? You came to my rescue, and God, I want to thank you. Grace that restores, your grace that redeems, your grace that releases, it releases me to worship, oh, your grace that repairs, visions and dreams, your grace that releases me. Your grace. When I look back over my life, I see that it was your grace that was carrying me. Where would I be if not for your grace carrying me in every season? Where would I be if not for your grace? You came to my rescue, and I want to thank you for your, your grace that restores, your grace that redeems. me to worship your grace that repairs visions and dreams your grace that releases miracles your grace when i look back over my life i see that it was your grace that was carrying me oh, oh, oh. grace that restores grace that restores grace that redeems grace that releases Oh. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know what? I didn't get a chance to say it at the beginning. Thank you, Jesus. But we know that grace is God's unmerited favor. And in the Bible, in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, it talks about there's a time and a season for everything. And then it talks about how God gives us grace to go through. It's a time to plant, a time to water, a time to, 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 to be happy, a time to be sad. And so if we can just sing this one more time, because if it wasn't for God's grace helping us through every season of our life, everybody has a different season right now. We all in different seasons. But if it wasn't for God helping us through these seasons, if it wasn't for his grace, where would we be? Where would we be? Where would our children be if it wasn't for God's grace? Now, all of us can, can attest to that. So if we can just sing that one more time. Where would I be if not for your grace? Oh, where, where, where? Tell me where would I be? Tell me where would I be? Tell me where would I be? If not for your grace, I don't even know where I'd be. Tell me where. where Tell me where. Would where would I, I be? be? Where would I be? If, if not, not for your grace. grace. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shouted something about the grace of God. Come on. How many thank how many thank God for his grace this morning? Amazing grace. It's too loud for me. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved. How many thank God for grace? You know, it, it's one part of that lyric that just messed me up. It said, carry me through every season. I don't know about you, but I, I'm a testimony. I'm, I'm a witness that it's the grace of God that will carry you through every season. Look at somebody say, he carried me through every season. I'm only here because of the grace of God. I'm only here because of the grace of God. It's his grace and mercy that brought me through. I'm living this moment because of him. Somebody say, it was grace. Why don't you high five somebody because five represents grace and say it was the grace of God. It was the grace of God. It was the grace of God. Grace restored me over and over again. Grace restored visions and dreams. Grace repairs the things. Do I got a witness this morning? It was the grace of God that brought me down through the years. It was the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where would I be without the grace? Without the grace of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands and give God praise. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. It was the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, you may see me, but it's a grace over my life. It's a grace over my life. That's why you can transition well, because it's a grace over your life. You can move from one season to another season, and the grace of God over your life. Well, you can go from divorce to single and do it real, because it's a grace over your life. You go to single to being married, it's a grace over your life. You can move jobs, and, and job, it's a grace over you. You can relocate and do it seamlessly, because it's a grace over your life. People can come and go, and you'll be all right, because it's a grace over your life. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. It may be trouble y'all looking at me this morning. It, it, it may be trouble in your life and you still got your right mind because it's the grace. Because it's the grace. 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 I thank God for his 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 grace. See, when you when it's the grace over your life, you can go through hell and don't look run down. Life can be all type of crazy. 
and you don't look woe out. I'm, I'm looking at people in here this morning. No matter what you've been through, you still looking good. It, it, it's the grace of the Lord. And sometimes you got to celebrate what God is doing in your life. Sometimes you got to celebrate what God is doing in your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, there's a, there's a meme going around on social media saying, you know, glory. It's a real old man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's a pastor. And he said, this is what pastor going to do to you. Bless the Lord. And he said, he's really 22, but he looks like he's 80 or 90. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't know about that. Glory to God. What I do know is that when there's a grace on your life, he'll preserve you. And, and he'll cause you to not look like what you've been through. I said, he'll preserve you. He'll preserve you. Look at somebody say, he's preserving me. He's preserving me. He's preserving me. I'm younger now, I'm old. He's preserving me. You go ahead and take it for granted. When I can show somebody that I've got it, but when he, when he gives you grace, hey, when he gives you grace, when he gives you grace, If your mind is staying on you, he'll keep you. He'll, he'll renew your, he'll renew your youth like an eagle. Because if you wait upon the Lord and be of good courage, he will strip it. I'm moving, but look at somebody say, you ain't got to tell me. I know God is keeping me. You, you ain't got to tell me. I know that I know that I know that I know that I know. 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 Thank you, Jesus. That I know that I know. He's carrying me through every scene. Hit him. He'll can, can y'all hear me? He'll carry you through seasons that you don't prefer to be in. But you stand like Paul and say, in whatever state I'm in, I've learned to be content. Whether I have plenty or whether I have, I, I'm encouraging somebody. Whether I'm a base or a pound, he'll carry you in every. It may not be like you want it, but he'll carry you through every season. Glory to God, hallelujah, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he will? Will he, won't he? Won't he do it? He's all over me. And he's keeping me alive. And I choose to believe the scripture that says, and your ladder shall be greater. That your for I choose to believe, Sister Bambi, that my ladder shall be greater. Look at three people around you and say, it gets greater later. It, it gets greater later. If you online, type that in, it gets greater later. It gets greater later. Like them leftovers taste better on the second day. It, Tell me whose report will you believe? We believe the report of the Lord. And sometimes you gotta come in his presence and encourage yourself. Sometimes you gotta come in his presence and worship and encourage yourself. Glory to God. Sometimes you gotta think about it and encourage. It. Look at somebody say, he's carrying me through every season. 
through every season. He can move mountains. And he'll keep me in the valley in every season. In every season. In every season. He's all over me and he's keeping me alive. Clap your hands for the Lord one more time. But I'm glad about it. Because he's a mighty good keeper. I'm glad about it. He's a mighty good keeper. I'm glad about it. In the time of trouble, God will preserve you. God will sustain you. My, 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 my. My, 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 my. Hadalabahosha. Glory to your name. Ah, that's right, Sister Bun. I don't take it lightly. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's awesome. Come on, let's receive Sister Latrice at this time. Thank you, Jesus. Followed by Sister Monique. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. I'm glad about it too, Bishop. I'm talking about grace be abound. Amen. My grace is abound. Amen. Because I've definitely been through some seasons that if it wasn't for God, I don't know how I would have got out. I definitely been through some things that if it is not for the Lord, if I think back for all the things that he's done for me, I bless God that I'm even here. Amen. Praise God. And so I, I thank God that I'm here and I thank God that you are here, uh, visitors and members of HFC online and in person on behalf of Bishop Lamont and Pastor Tiger Hill. And we welcome you to worship with us. We thank you that you chose us to worship with, to lift up the name of the Lord. We pray that you come in and get what you're looking for. This table is set. The spread is abound. Amen. And so we just, we pray that you get what you come for. We pray that you be encouraged and delivered and edified in Jesus' name. Thank you for worshiping with us. Amen. Good morning. Can we say it's almost time? It's almost time. It's the Christmas party. Yay! It's Christmas party on uh, Christmas 17th. It's on December 17th. The doors open at 630. We ask that you be here by 7 o'clock for all the festivities that we have. The tickets are still on sale until the 12th of December. We have a lot of names, but we need y'all to pay for your tickets so we can have an extravagant party and everybody enjoy it. So there is a sign-up sheet in the foyer for your tickets, and we ask that everybody come and everybody fellowship and have a good time in the Lord and with each other. Amen? Thank y'all. Somebody shall get your ticket. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to know how many we are preparing for. Amen. Tickets are $8 and you can do so right after service. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise for uh, Lady Tiger. Amen. Pastor Tiger, let's give God praise. Amen. Her birthday is this coming week. Let's give God praise. Amen. On December the 3rd. Amen. Friday, December 3rd. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we thank God for what he is doing. How many thank God for Outstanding First Lady? Amen, amen, amen. Bless the Lord, amen. And how many know what you see is what you get? You don't get another side. You, you know, some people got another side. What you see is what you get. And we give honor to whom honor is due, amen. Bless the Lord, and so it is our custom, amen. Uh, we sow a Christmas seed every year, amen. Bless the Lord, it's our custom. We do it every year, amen. Bless the Lord, and so, amen. Those seeds are due December the 12th, amen. Bless the Lord. If you're not done so, you can pick up an envelope today of a 125, amen, 125. Bless the Lord. $75 of that seed, amen, we're asking you to be turned in by December 5th, which is next Sunday, amen. We'll be worshiping and giving honor, amen. Bless the Lord, and so it's going to be a blessing, amen. Amen to our First Lady. Amen. And the remaining balance of $50 will be due on the 12th. All right. You can pay it all together if you want to. Amen. Hallelujah. Whatever suits you. But we want to be a blessing. Amen. It's a good thing to be a blessing too. To sow. Amen. And I believe that that's just a small amount. Amen. Compared to the labor of love that goes forth. Amen. And it's a good thing to sow up. Amen. I said it's a good thing to sow up. 
The anointing flows from the head down. Amen. And so mark your calendars. You can sow that today. You can do that today or any time before. Amen. How many feel the anointing? Amen. Let, let's keep on rolling. Let's receive a special ministry and dance, and then we'll release the word of the Lord for you today. Come on, clap your hands. Bless the Lord. I am what you created me to be. I'm full of something tonight. I'm full of possibilities tonight. And every possibility in me must manifest. Somebody lift up your hands and say, it's time for me to manifest. Oh, I wish I had somebody to declare it. Somebody say, it's time for me to manifest.
two lion-like men of Moab, and he went down also and slew a lion in the midst 
of a pit in the time of snow. Bless the Lord. And he slew an Egyptian, a goodly man, and the Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but he went down to him with a staff and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and slew him with his own spear. I'm zooming in on uh, verse 20. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to talk from the next few moments. Amen. Do it now. Somebody shout, do it now. Do it now. Bless the Lord. Do it now. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Do it now. Bless the Lord. Amen. How many know how you think about God will determine who you become? How you think about God will determine who you become. You aren't just a byproduct of nature and and, and nurture, bless the Lord. You are a byproduct of your God picture. Can I talk? Amen. And that internal picture of God determines how you see everything else. I said that internal picture of God determines how you see everything else. Most of our problems are not just circumstantial. Most of our problems are perceptional. Is that all right? Our biggest problems can be traced back to an inadequate understanding of who God is. Is that all right? Oftentimes, our problems seem really big because our God seems really small. Is that all right? That's why the Bible says, let the people say continually, let the Lord be magnified. Is that all right? In fact, we reduce God to the size of our biggest problem. One scholar said, a low view of God is the cause of a hundred lesser evils. But a person that lives in a high view of God is relieved of 10,000 temporal problems. It's all about, how many know, a lot of stuff is all the angle you see it from. That's why the psalmist said, now shall my head be lifted high above my enemies. If I can change my perspective, if I can change where I sit, if I can change where I view, then I'll be able to handle things that come in life from a different perspective. Is that all right? So Sometimes we face in the same giant, but the reason why you can deal with it is because you choose to elevate. Come on. And not stay in a low place where it seems so, 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 so hard and so big. But we must understand that getting a prayer answered depends more on you than it does on God. We're talking about, amen, bless the Lord, this mighty man, amen, this mighty man of war in our text who uh, chased down a lion. Now, now this is the time that we must be focusing to go after some things and walking in victory. I believe that God is preparing us, bless the Lord, for 2022. Is that all right? And all these words that have been going forth are building your faith to go after what God has called you to be. Is that all right? And to possess what God wants you to have. To call those things that be not as though they were. To come in atmosphere and hear ministry of dance like that. To manifest and say, yes, that's my season. I'm looking for things, amen, to come into reality. It's already done, but I'm looking for it to manifest. I'm looking for it to show up and to possess. I've told you this many times to possess. You're going to have to, amen, start dispossessing some things because you are not going to possess, hallelujah, if you allow fear and intimidation to hinder you. Is that all right? The kingdom suffered violence and the violent take it by force, but you ain't going to take nothing by force if you ran by fear and intimidation. That's why the enemy, your adversary, goes about I feel the anointing as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour to invoke fear and intimidation to get you to back off, to get you to slow down, to get you to stay stuck, to get you to stay settled so that you won't go after what God has called you to do. But there's the hour right now that we're in that you're going to have to chase some lions. Is that all right? You're going to have to chase some hard things. Is that all right? You gonna got to get to the place that you say I can run through uh, 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 troops and 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 leap over walls. It's some stuff that you're going to have to take a stand. If not, bless, if you don't take a stand, you're going to give the adversary more ground into your life. Just thought about this a couple of weeks ago. You know, there's someone that lives on our street, bless the Lord, and they uh, have pit bulls. Or, and so one of the pit bulls got out, bless the Lord. And, and uh, uh, 
uh, you know, just had puppies and got out. Bless the Lord. And so everybody come running the house. The kids are playing outside. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And, 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 and Kaylee was outside. Bless the Lord with the pit bull. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And I went back and looked on the camera because we got cameras and I went back and Kaylee was in the garage is right here. Kaylee is right here at the garage. The pit bull is right here. And Kaylee said, go. No, she said, go, you go. She crying now. Go, you go. Everybody else then ran. Kaylee's sitting there. Go, you go. And I'm looking at this on the camera, and I said, Kaylee, why didn't you just run in the house? She said, I told it to go because I didn't want it to chase me in the house. Okay, that may be simple. But for a nine-year-old, I'd rather stop you right here. And with fear, she was saying, go! Because if I don't stop it right here, I'm, if somebody don't take a stand right here, I'm going to give you more access. I'm going to give you more ground. And you think you just want to leave that devil alone. Keep leaving that devil alone. And then you're going to give him more access in your life. Give him more grace. Give him more territory. And she cried, go, go. Is that all right? You can't, you can't, you can't. The lions know. That's going to be some things you're going to have to chase in this season. Lion chasers know that their that they're best thought about God on their best day. You got to know who God is. So you can't run up on stuff and try to do stuff if you don't know who God is. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. The Bible said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways, declares the Lord. Even as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. You ain't going to fight no big devils, and you don't have a big reality of who God is. Is that all right? It's a lot of stuff you ain't going to step out on if you, if you really ain't trusting God. And maybe it's time to stop putting God in a box. Amen. Bless the Lord. Maybe it's time to stop creating God in your image and let him cre create you in his. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Because the more we grow, the bigger God should get. The more testimonies you acquire, the bigger God should get in your view. You got to go back in your mind and say, I got a, a, a big track record with God. And every time he does a thing in my life, I get another revelation of the bigness of God. God is bigger than when he was when I first got saved. God is bigger than he was five years ago. God is bigger than he was last year. Everything he does. And the bigger gods get, the smaller our lions will become. The bigger God, whoo, the bigger gods get, the smaller the obstacles will become, the smaller the giants will become, the smaller the lions and the bears will become. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. The, 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 the smallest thing we go through will become. See, long before God laid the foundations of the earth, earth he had us in mind. Long, long, long time ago, he decided to adopt us into his family. He thought of everything, provided for everything we could possibly need. God planned for every contingency you might even encounter before the beginning of time. Hallelujah, bless the Lord. And one of the most mind-boggling scriptures we have, First Timothy, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and the sound mind. Amplified says God has not given us a spirit of fear, faithless, timid. Faithless timidity, but of power, dunamis, and of love and the sound mind. Discipline, self-control, where God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us. That word prepares derives from the ancient custom word, sending a servant ahead of a king to, to, to secure a safe passage. Is that all right? Hallelujah. God has already gone before us. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. And sometimes that is itinerary. Sometimes you're going to have to come to face to face with a lion in a pit on a snowy day. He knows the way that I take. It might not be the way that I choose, but knowing he's already gone before me gives me great peace. But when you find yourself in those challenging circumstances, you need to know that God is ordering your footsteps. And you can, you can have a sense of destiny because you know God has considered every contingency in your life. And he always has your best interest at heart. And, and, and he since destiny is rooted in the sovereignty of God. Nothing catches God by surprise. I'm reminded of the scripture in 2 Kings uh, 6 chapter. Bless the Lord. Well, a group of prophets were chopping down a tree near a river. And one of the axe heads fell off in the river. And the prophet who lost the axe head said to Elisha, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This apprentice uses the past tense. As far as he was concerned, the axe head is good as gone. The apprentice regarded his final as a, this loss as final, but he had no expectation whatsoever that it would be achieved. Retrieved, bless the Lord. I, I think he wanted a little mercy or maybe a little sympathy. He's concerned that the axe head is as good as gone. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. He didn't even have a category about what to happen because axe heads don't float. Or do they? Glory to God. That, 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 that's only one way to find out. Pray, pray a ridiculous prayer. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Sometime, glory to God, some ridiculous things need some ridiculous prayers. And some ridiculous situations need some ridiculous praise. Glory to God. Sometimes you got to get ridiculous in your giving. Glory to God. Ridiculous in your serving. And incredible God deserves incredible praise. Hallelujah. If I'm Elisha, I feel bad for the guy who lost the borrow axe head, but hallelujah, but, but, but maybe I let him borrow mine, but, but whatever, bless the Lord, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah. He said, wait a minute, where did you find it? And, and then they begin to pray a prayer and the, act, the irons begin to swim. Yeah. Now you say that's not a life or death situation. No, no big deal, it was just borrowed. We can, we can, maybe we can just replace it. It's just borrowed. Y yes, it's a borrowed axe Head. Yes, he lost it, but but it's not the worst thing that ever happened. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. It's just an axe head. I know that may sound crazy, but doesn't it seem maybe that you ought to save an amazing miracle for maybe leprosy or something like that? What's the big deal? Let's just get another axe head. Save up some prayers for, for some bigger problems. Save up some prayer for some bigger tragedies. But hear me this morning and hear me good. God is great not just because nothing is too big for him, but God is great because nothing is too small for him either. And if it concerns you, it concerns him because he said, I will perfect everything that concerns you. Everything that concerns you. So even when God fulfills the little desires of your heart, you, you better give God great. Lord, you did that for me. You, did, you didn't even have to do that. That was small to somebody else, but to me, Is there anything too big for the Lord? But there's also, is there anything too small for the Lord? No, no, no. No, no, no. Bless the Lord. Sometimes, and sometimes we don't trust him in the small things. Sometimes we let the small things go, period. Just like the situation, bless the Lord. Maybe I use it for leprosy or something bigger. Bless the Lord. These kinds of miracles help us redefine our reality. And the reality is that nothing is too difficult for God. See, we tend to rank miracles. Oh, I, oh, I said we tend to rank miracles. We have big requests and then we have little requests. We have easy requests and then we got difficult requests. But that's a false construct. The truth is, to the infinite, all finites are equal. There's no big or small, easy or difficult possible or impossible. When it comes to God, there's no degrees of difficulty. When it comes to God, how is it a deg degree of difficulty? Hallelujah. See, if we trust God, hallelujah, everything, bless the, you got to trust God in everything, the big things and the little things. You got to believe that God cares about every detail of your life, big and small. 
And sometimes we only use faith for the big stuff and we let the little stuff go. Ooh. Sometimes we only use our faith for the big stuff and we let the little stuff go. Come on, it's the truth. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. But we better trust him at all times. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. We, we, we do it for the big stuff, but the little stuff. But you better start taking that little stuff to God, too. Because the last time I read my Bible, it's the little foxes. That's more than that. And if you get enough little stuff that piles up, that little stuff becomes big stuff. And folk tell me, why don't you just let that go? That ain't no big deal. If it ain't nipped, this little deal going to be a big deal. You get about 50 little things, pile them all up. It can be the demise of some things. I can't get nobody in here. You better know everything. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. If you let too much little stuff get out of hand, come on here. Bless the Lord. That, 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 that little smirk, that, that little back talk. Come on here. That, that, that little bit of disrespect. That little bit of disregard. That little bit of out of orderness. That little leaven must pour the whole lump. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes you need, you need to on purpose trust God with the little things. Is that all right? Hallelujah. There are no odds when it comes to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. First point, I just got three. See it the right way. Hallelujah. If you're online, type that in. See it the right way. God has great things in store for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you're not yet. Glory to God is so much bigger than your now. Because we know the outcome of the lion chase. We, we, we fail to appreciate the way it looked to a bystander. But when Benaiah had killed the lion, hallelujah, what if Benaiah had been killed by the lion? We'll say it like this. He would have looked completely ridiculous. Oh, fool ain't had no business going out the lion anyway. What made him think that he could? And the fool did it in the snow. I mean, why would he even do that? And, and in a pit at that, you know, can't you hear people whispering under their breath at the funeral? What was he thinking? But, 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 but lion chasers aren't afraid of doing something that seems ridiculous to others because they know that anything is possible. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, the reason I try. It's because I know that anything is possible. Glory to God. Yeah, the reason I shout, the reason I give, the reason I serve is because I know that anything, to a bystander, I look crazy. But unless you have the revelation that I have, the testimonies that I have, how, how favor runs in this family, unless you know that, Unless you know the miracles that happen in my community, unless you know the signs and wonders that happen in our church, you wouldn't understand why I do what I do. And to you, I look crazy. And to you, I don't expect you to understand me. But Psalm 37 and 23 said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Watch this, and he delighteth in his way. Psalm 119 and 133 says, order my steps in your word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Is that all right? See, a request can never be too ridiculous when you're asking the one who knows no limits. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We underestimate how much spiritual authority we have when we pray according to the will of God. The word bind means prohibit or fasten with chains. A request can never be too ridiculous when you're talking to the one who knows no limits. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Your not yet is so much bigger than your right now. A request can never be too ridiculous when you're asking the one that knows no no limits. Ask and you shall receive. <coughs> Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. The kingdom of heaven is on the other side of the door. So sometimes you got to knock like you the police. Boo, 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 boo. Come on here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. D -d -d don't, let, don't let the mental or spiritual lions keep you from experiencing everything, hallelujah, God has to offer you. The greatest breakthroughs in your life will happen when you push past fear. 
The defining moments will double, hallelujah, as scary moments, but you've got to face those fears and begin the process of unlearning them. Teach, Bishop. Almost like a hard drive with a computer virus. Our minds have infected files, irrational fears, or misconceptions keep us from operating the way we designed to operate. And if those fears and misconceptions aren't uninstalled, Tonisha, then they undermine everything we do. I'll say it again and I'll say it again because it's in season. Half, hallelujah, half of learning is learning. The other half of learning is unlearning. Half of learning is learning. The other half of learning is unlearning. And unfortunately, if I can get some help in here, unfortunately, unlearning is twice as hard as learning. <laughs> Lord Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's like missing your exit on the freeway. You got to drive to the next effort, then exit, then double back around. And every mile you go in the wrong direction is really a two-mile error. Unlearning is twice as hard. And it often takes twice as long. It's harder to get old thoughts out of your mind than it is to get new thoughts in your mind. But if you study the teachings of Christ, can I teach this this morning? If you study the teachings of Christ, you'll realize that he was reverse engineering religious minds. Because those can be the toughest minds to change. Oh, you ain't met a spirit till you met a religious spirit. Ho, ho, ho. You, 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 you ain't met something till you met something that's deep down in tradition for mal. Oh, that, that. <laughs> is that all right? Is that all right? If you study the teachings of Christ, you realize that he was reverse engineering religious mind. That's why two phrases repeated over and over again in the Sermon of the Mount. Is that all right? Jesus said when he was teaching the Sermon of the Mount, come on, you know the Beatitudes, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. He, Jesus said, when Jesus was talking to him, he was said like this, you have heard that it was said, but I tell you. I can't get nobody. What, Je what was Jesus saying and doing? He was uninstalling. I can't get nobody here. Hallelujah. Negative concepts and upgrading them to what God. And he would tell, you've heard it said this way. But I tell you. In other words, ain't no need for me telling you something new if you can't recognize the wrong way that you heard it. I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. That's why, that's why when you plant something in the ground, you don't just put in, you got to dig up the dead stuff. You got to dig up the weeds. You got to dig up everything that's not conducive. You have heard, you've heard that it was said, but I tell you, bless the Lord. He said, you have heard that it was said. He said, you've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those that persecute you because, because all your life you've heard it another way. And now God is doing a new thing in your life. You got to check and recognize and pin the point. I've heard this another way all my life. Half of spiritual growth is learning what we don't know. The other half is unlearning what we do know. Is that all right? And it is the failure to unlearn irrational fears and misconceptions that keep us from being who God wants us to be. And sometimes you need a detox. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I don't care how long you've been saved, it's some stuff in some areas in your life you still unlearning. It's some stuff you still got to go back and say, oh, okay, okay, I, I forgot. I don't do it that way no more. Okay, I, I, I forgot we made a deal in our marriage. We're not doing that no more. Okay, I, I, I forgot I changed that. Okay, six months ago I said I wasn't doing it no more. Oh, 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 oh. Sometimes I just did it by habit. I just did it because I was used to doing it. I'm sorry. Don't charge it to me. Don't charge it. I, it's, just, it's just in me. It's ingrained in me. See, when you've been unfaithful for a long time, faithfulness is foreign to you. 
Oh, y'all don't want to talk in here. Because if all you know, you just ought to be. But when you've been a certain way. Is that all right? Getting answered to prayers between more on you than does on God. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. John 5, a great example, the importance of unlearning. The man had been crippled for 38 years. And Jesus asked him if he wanted to get well. But the man believed there was only one way to get healed. He said, I have no one to help me in the pool. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When the water is stirred, I have no one to help me. Hallelujah. While I'm trying to get in, what he say? Somebody else gets in before me. That man made an assumption that, that, that may have cost him 38 years. I can't get nobody. He only had one category of healing. There's only one way he could get healed in his mind. I can't get nobody. He assumed based on ancient superstition, hallelujah, that he had to be the first one in the pool when the water was stirred in order to be healed. In that sense, he was imprisoned by what he knew. But Jesus uninstalled that mistaken belief with one sentence. Stand up, pick up your bed, and walk. Is that all right? Now, now, here's what I need you to see. Jesus didn't free. Jesus didn't just set the man free physically. He set him free mentally, cognitively. See, faith is unlearning the senseless worries and misguided beliefs that kept us uh, uh, bound. Is that all right? The good fight of faith is the fight that your heart demands that you keep on fighting. It's hope against hope. Is that all right? Look at somebody and say, if you're fighting, fight on. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And you, and you mad about fighting, but you better keep fighting. Is that all right? Because if you're fighting, you still got strength. Right. Woo! And you, you mad about fighting, but if you're fighting, you still got strength. So don't get weary now. Your breakthrough is on the way. If you don't get weary and well doing, you'll reap in due season if you faint not. Your walk with God doesn't mean it will be easy. Truthfully, you're going to end up Maybe in a few lines then along the journey. It's going to look dark. It's going to be scary. But the truth is right there with you. So take courage. You're not alone. It won't be long before you get to where God wants you to be. And when you are doing this, somebody say, do it now. That's what I'm preaching about. Do, do it now. And when you're doing this, you got to learn how to conserve your energy. You don't entertain everything because you can wear out. You pick your battles. You pick what you engage in. You pick what you entertain because you got to learn how to conserve your energy because you can wear out. You don't entertain everything because you can wear out. Look at somebody. Say, you can wear out. You can wear out. If you couldn't wear out, he would have told you don't get weary and well doing. You conserve your, I'm not even going to get in that. I, woo, I want to, but I won't. <laughs> My energy says, my stamina says, <laughs> see, it's wiser to stay quiet than to explain your problems to people who really don't care. And when you get to a place of peace in your life, you're like, you can have it. <laughs> Whatever you want to say about it, you can have it. You don't want to say nothing back? No, you can have it. Y'all can have a field day. You can have a party. Be not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. See, one way to upgrade your mind is to download scripture. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by what? The word of God, the word of God. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You have to move into that place. See, the enemy is whatever you allow him to be. He's a manifestation of fear you already have. And you got to decide today that he's under your feet. You got to decide today that you're a child of the Most High God. Job said, that what I fear has come upon me. The only God-ordained fear that you ought to be walking is the fear of God. Is that all right? And if we have the fear of God, then we don't have to fear anyone or anything else. See, unlearning our fears is really the process of learning to trust God more and more. Lion chasers experience the same fears as everyone else. Lion chasers just learn how to face those fears. 
That's what David, how we fought Goliath. You come to me with a sword and a spear. I come to you in the name of the Lord. I'm thinking about his love. I'm thinking about his bigness. I'm thinking about the possibility of what he can do. Hallelujah. They have unlearned the fear of uncertainty, the fear of risk, the fear of looking foolish. So many people bound by looking foolish. But what if I fail? Ain't the first time you fail. What's your word about it now? Glory to God, ain't the first time you had to pick it up and dust yourself off and get back in line. Though a righteous man falls seven times, he can still get, I don't want to come back to church because I messed up. You ain't the only one that done messed up. Dust yourself off, repent if you got to repent, get rebuked if you got to get rebuked, and get back in line. what you got to do. On, Who gonna say something? Who without sin cast the first stone? Where are your accusers at? And what? I messed up and? I got thrown off and? <laughs> Second point. Trust God more. 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 Is that all right? That's what lion chasers do. You trust God more. Lion chasers, they don't necessarily know more than other people, but they've unlearned the fears that kept them captive. And they have done it in the same way by chasing their fears instead of running from them. You know, if you keep running for something, you'll be running all your life. That they expose themselves to the very thing that they were afraid of. And that's what you do. That, 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 that's what you got to do. It's around. I pray. I pray that God send people in your company in this season. I pray that he sends people in my company. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. That you will surround yourself with folk that's got boldness like you got boldness. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We, we look at David and see how David, how David was able to do this stuff. But later on as David went up, David didn't just run by himself. David ran with other mighty men. And this, Benadad was one of David's mighty men. Is that all right? David was not the only one, bless the Lord, that looked at stuff and did stuff. It was folks around him. See, you are what you're around. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And I prophesied as God is about to send people around you just as bold as you are. I'm telling you, you're about to get some stuff done in 2022 because you, you're going to have not leeches around you, but you have some pushers around you. They're going to say, hey, man, go get it, girl. Go get it. Let's do it. Let's do it. You work on that. I'm going to work on this, and let's go up together. See, David was strong, but he didn't have no weak folks around him. It was a collaboration. Somebody say Collaboration. Yeah, you need, you need iron sharpens iron. I believe we move into a day that we want me to bounce things off of each other. Is that all right? Bounce wisdom off of each other. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Not, not just a great leader, but a leader got great people around them. Not just a Moses, but Moses got somebody that's going to hold his arms up at the same time. Lion chasers have a high threshold of fear because they built up fear immunity. Oh, Jesus. See, oftentimes the cure for fear of failure is not success. Sometimes it's failure. Yes, sir. The cure for fear of rejection is not, not acceptance. Sometimes it's that rejection. See, sometimes you got to be exposed to small quantities of whatever you're afraid of. And you know how to build up resistance. I can't get nobody in here. So what are you afraid of? What, what, what allergens trigger a fear reaction? Is that all right? Those are the very things that you need to expose yourself. Is that one of the greatest things that could happen to you? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Is for your fear to become sometime your reality. Okay. And when you discover that I done been through it and I was scared of it, but when I walked through it and I came out on the side, now I got a testimony. It ain't the end of the world. Sometime, sometime, sometime God will allow you to taste it. That's right. That rejection, that heartbreak. Yeah. And you come through and say, it ain't the end of the world. God allow you to lose it. And then you find out you can make it without it. 
I can't get nobody here. You'll say, it's not the end of the world. You ever had to walk through something and you say, I ain't going to be able to make it. I don't know how I'm going to recover. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And then you went through it and you say, oh, but I'm still standing. Oh. It didn't take me out. Glory to God. Oh, I, I still know how to regroup. I still know how to recover. Is that all right? Is that all right? Your fear is worse. The actual thing you were re- rejection of. Is that all right? How does the scripture describe Satan? The enemy has a raw doubt, raw lying, seeking whom he may devour. Two married tactics when it comes to neutralizing your spirituality, discouragement and fear. He wants you to focus on past mistakes that you've made. That's why he's called the accuser of the brethren. And the end result is loss of courage. It's a tactic of fear. Satan wants to scare the heaven out of you. He wants to put you on your heels so you can become reactive and defensive. That's why he's that as a prowling lion. Is that all right? Hallelujah. But it takes Christ-like courage to chase a lion. You know, I'm amazed because greater is he that sent you than he that sent the world. Jesus never ran away from anyone or anything. He wasn't afraid of walking into the temple when he knew people had a plot on his life. He wasn't afraid of the lunatic and the legion of demons. Come on here. When the lynch mob came to arrest him, what did Jesus do? He didn't run and hide. He stepped forward and identified himself. Jesus never ran away from his detractors or persecutors. Even when his life was on the line. Jesus refused to defend himself before judicial authorities. He decided, because if he had decided to defend himself, I'm convinced that he could have and would have talked his way out of the cross. He never lost an argument. He chose to close his mouth even on the cross. He decided he he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. I can't get nobody in here. And as a lamb before the sheriff is silent, he didn't open his mouth. He could have saved himself. That's what Jesus said. He said, no man takes my life. Glory to God. I lay it down. He told him, don't you think, don't you think I cannot call my father at once. Hallelujah. And I have 12 legion of angels to get me out of here. Don't think you win. Don't think you win it. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, but I can't do this because if I would did it, then the scripture wouldn't be fulfilled. But don't you think? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And here's what the Lord is saying. Going into, I'm not going to wait to 2022 to push you into this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last days of this year. He said, wake up the mighty men. He said, tell them it's time to do some stuff now. Is that all right? You, you got it. The, the names of those identified mighty warriors of David, mighty men. They recognize as mighty men in an era and under any circumstances. They were mighty men. Somebody said mighty men. Mighty. This encounter with the lion teaches us some powerful truths about the lion. Hear, hear, hear it, hear it, and I'm closing. Hear it. I ain't long this morning. This is not the season. Hallelujah. Don't wait to be chased or to be attacked. Hear me? Is that all right? This is the time that you don't attack just a threat, but potential. Ah, give no place to the enemy. He chased the lion into the pit. Are you nuts? Our society teaches us to avoid pain, avoid trials, avoid difficulties. At all costs. Avoid hard work. Avoid sacrifice. Avoid working out. Avoid anything that may cause you to have to endure or suffer. Hallelujah. Normal people don't chase lions. They run from lions. Keep a safe distance. Is that all right? And they should never win. And also they never win impressive victories. But he chased the lion. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Goodbye. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you ignoring stuff. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You walking around here. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You don't want to deal with stuff in your life. Glory to God. Because it ain't bothering me. Bless the Lord. It's not a threat. No, no, no. The Lord said this is you attack the potential threat. Is that all right? Oh, ain't nothing wrong now. Okay. You attack the potential. That's my last point. Somebody say, attack the potential. 
come on, say it again, attack their potential. Oh, that's why I got to get some things in order in my mentality going into another year. I'm attacking the potential. Why I'm trying to redo some things? Because if I don't manage well my finances, it could be a potential threat. Oh, y'all don't want to talk in here. If I don't start saving, I know I'm good right now, but the potential. If I don't get in line with my spiritual walk, glory to God, I know I'm good now, but if I don't get in line with my spiritual, there's a potential for backsliding. If I stay out of place with God, yes, I still love God, but if I don't start checking things in my life, there is a potential that I'll drift. That I'll drift. And you're good because you're doing your own thing and, and you're doing it your own way. But there is a way that seemeth right unto man and the end thereof is destruction. Where's your potential? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody say it's the potential of it. It's, it's the potential of it. It's the potential. I, I got to start taking care of my health. I got to start taking care of my body. Got to start managing my weight. Glory to God. Everything may be fine now, but the potential. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I can't wild out and do whatever I want to do. I got to be conscious at some point. Glory to God because it's, it is the, it is the, it is the potential. Somebody say it is the potential. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And if I don't, I need to get informed because if I don't get informed, ignorance, glory to God, going to get me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, when you value something, you treat it differently. I got to get informed. Is that all right? You got to get informed. Is that all right? You got to get informed. Somebody say, informed. It's the potential threat. It's the potential. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Even in dating, it's not just the potential. All right. All right. Everybody say, you just get with somebody. They ain't got to be what they need to be right now. They ain't got to be what they need to be right now. But they got potential. Glory to God. I'm, I'm here to tell you, don't, Jake, don't date. I'm going to fix my words. Don't date just potential. You better date reality too. Well, well I know, I know they, I, I know they ain't nothing right now, but I see the potential. That's good. I want you to see potential. But in addition to potential, what's the reality right now? No, I need some potential and some reality. <laughs> I need some potential and reality right now. You ain't gonna show me something. You gonna show me something right now. You ain't. You ain't gonna show me. Oh, when when we get married, when we get together, I'm I'ma start doing this. I'ma start doing that. I'ma start. No. No. I'ma start doing it. I'ma do it when we do. When we do that, I'ma start. I, I'm. I, I'ma. Because let me help you with something. Although one may have the potential to do or be greater, though you got the potential, you might not have the desire. Watch this. You might not have the desire to do the work required to reach it. See, see, that's what I'm saying. Because, see, that's the potential, but that potential going to take work. And you may not be committed to the work that it's going to take. It ain't the potential. We all got potential, don't we? I want to know, are you going to be committed to the work that it's going to take? Come on here. I, I, do you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not like your last boo. Come on here. I want to know, are you going to do what it takes for me? Not like the last one. See, the last one, took, last one put up with that. I'm not going to put up with that. I'm not going to put up that. Yeah, I'm not going to put up. I'm not going to put up. You ain't going to clean my house while I'm at work. I'm not going to put up with that. <laughs> I don't care how good you clean a house. A man don't work so <laughs> We don't do that over here. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I ain't going out to eat and buying it every time. We're not doing that over here. They, they might have the desire. I don't know why I'm going here. They may have the desire. 
but they don't do the work because it's going to take work to reach that potential. And so while you got potential, I need to see your work ethic. Not just in the natural, but in the spirit. I, I need to see an ethic. Well, come on, let's get married next week. I'm not rushing to get married. I need to see a work ethic. That means that, that, that you walk in it long enough to prove something. You better read your Bible. I'm not anxious for nothing. <laughs> Look at somebody said, don't just date potential. Date reality. It's a whole folk that said a whole bunch of stuff, what they going to do. And put a ring on it and don't do. Because now I feel like I got you now. Now I feel like we trapped now. And then you say, well, you know, why I got to do it now? I was like this when you met me. And all you got to say is, you so right. You so right. And I gave you my heart based on potential. Lord Jesus. And and there's some stuff I should have saw that I missed. Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Is that all right? And see, and see, and see, too many of us, and I'm closing, too many of us, we self medicate. We run from, we drink to distract so that you forget and refuse to deal with the lions in your life. Is that all right? And, and you forget, you forget that this and this is, we forget that this is an attack, glory to God, or to be attacked uh, proposition. Benaiah speaks to an aggressive faith, not a passive. He's in other words, say, I got to check this lion because if I don't check this lion, it could potentially be a threat. Is that all right? In other words, avoid it, but don't run after it. Some of you being attacked, scratched to death, bitten simply because you fail to attack. It's nothing impossible with God. If nothing is impossible with God, how will you really know unless you're in some impossible situations? Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Most of us spend our time in prayer asking the God to keep us out of the lion's den. While Daniel prayed, knowing it would send him in the lion's den. Oh, y'all don't want to talk in here. Our prayers for an easy way out. But if you're going to get to that top place, you're going to have to work, grind. It's going to it's gonna take some stamina. It's going to take some you and you. It's, it's going to take more of you than it's been you. I'm just going to wait. No, don't wait. Don't hesitate. Go offensive. Deal, deal with the debt head on. Come on. Deal with your addiction head on. De- deal with that unforgiveness head on. Bless the Lord. I'm telling you, you bad enough. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You bad enough to walk in forgiveness and you didn't receive an apology. You waiting on an apology. You stuck. Because you might not never get it. See, 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 here's what I'm saying. Ignoring it won't make it go away. It's going to only get stronger. Back that line into a corner where you can get your hand around his hand. Is that all right? Is your faith aggressive or is it passive? Are you attempting anything so big? Are you attempting anything so big that unless God intervenes, it will fail? I know I'm talking big, but I don't come to church to talk small. I can't get nobody. See, sometimes my minds need to be expanded. Because cold days can be your best days. Your toughest days can be your best days. Mess me up about the whole text. The Bible says, Caleb, the Bible says he, he, he chased him into a pit on a snowy day. It would have been wiser to chase him on a sunny day when he could make sure his footing is, when breathing comes easy. 
gripping your sword isn't impacted by ice. You understand? What if ice is melting? What if it's deep snow and I can't run? Like, it, I would be a fool to try to go after something on a snowy day. Hallelujah. But then, but but no, no, his miracle demanded immediate action. And sometimes God will put some pressure on you. Sometimes, glory to God. That's why over us said, something down inside of me is telling me to go ahead. Sometimes God apply pressure and tell you, do it right now. I know you was waiting the next year, do it now. I know you was waiting in February to start it, do it now. Throw up the plant. Well, I ain't going to do it now because this holiday. Some stuff you need to do in an off season. Lest something come up when you want to do it. And you can't don't, 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 don't put off for tomorrow. What you can do today. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Some of you, the Lord is prompting you to do something. Get it started. Do it now. Do it now. Some of you waiting on a perfect day to take on your line. When I'm older. When I'm younger. When I can afford it. When I'm stronger, when I'm healthy, when I'm not alone. Listen, glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, the day may be snowy, but it's no excuse to wait. See, you can't let your environment, and this is where we are. You can't let your, you cannot let you cannot let your environment or your atmosphere stop you from your assigned task of attack. You can I can't let my environment. Sometimes you gotta say, God, I'm gonna do it, and this is what I'm working with, but this is what I'm gonna do. Because God usually meets you in the pit. And the deepest, darkest, deadliest moments are used in the sanctuary where he chooses to abide. Hallelujah. Bless the, not just in the plush, plush, when I all ducks in order. He shows up where, where there are lions in close confines. The right place is often glory to God. Hallelujah. The right place, see, to, to the natural look foolish. But I'm not doing this in my might. Because if I was doing this in my might, I would do it another way. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. But if I'm doing this by faith, Hebrews 11 says that the giants of faith, and Hebrews 11, read it, they all face, they, they face pits, impossible odds, loud lions. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And some of you blame your circumstances when things aren't going well. Wow. Just like you blame the ref in the game every time. <laughs> now, it can't be every time. They can't cheat every time now. Sometimes, but if every time, it ain't your fault. Is that all right? We look from some external state goal. But maybe your problem isn't our circumstances. Is that all right? God has given you a 360 degree perspective on everything. He's considered every contingency. Sometimes you got to say, God, you knew I would face this in this season of my life. You knew this would come up when it was snowing outside. <laughs> you knew this lion would be here right now. I can't choose the scenery. If I could choose the scenery, <laughs> things would be different. Come on, Holly. Some of you mad because you at this age in your life and this is you. What you gonna be delivered or mad? What you wanna be delivered or mad? Why is my kids? Why I gotta be my child? Why I gotta? What you gonna? I gotta be my daddy. What you go? What you gonna be delivered or you gonna be mad? You're going to live the rest of your life bitter? Or you're going to say, it's, it's, it's a snowy day. <laughs> it's cold outside. I don't feel like it. But I got to do what I got to do. Because if I don't deal with this lion, the potential of it. At least I ain't going to have to worry about this monkey on my back. <laughs> If, Lord Jesus, glory to God. Now, not this lion. I may run into another one. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God see everything around you. Every issue, every person, every experience. And you got to renew your mind to this, folks. If not, the devil will have a field day with you. You, you got to renew your mind. God, you knew every contingency. You, you knew this season of my life. Nothing catches you by surprise. God, you don't know you knew. Lord Jesus. And there's some stuff I got to do now. Because if not, you can always wait for another day. You can always wait for another day. You got to learn how to do things when God press it on your heart to do it. Is that all right? 
Is that all right? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us see that through a narrow slice of reality. You're looking through a narrow peephole. No, no, no. Magnify. That's why we come in here and turn up every week. Because yeah. yeah. you got the ability to go after things in life. And the reason you can do it, because you're not doing it in your strength. Jeremiah said, By th through you, I can run through a troop yeah. and leap over a wall. He didn't say he could do it. Yeah. Through you, yeah. I can run. Who in the world would run through a troop? Stupid. And leap over a wall? Dumb in the natural. Don't make no sense. Fool, you're going to bust your head. But through you. See, see we need to come in so we can stay more spiritual. And do what God is calling us to do. Hallelujah. And stop waiting. The, 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 hallelujah. So, ooh, I just the Lord says, some of you are waiting too long for some stuff. You ain't waiting on him. <laughs> you waiting too long. Because you done told God when you going to start. You done told God when you going to start. Now be there, Lord, when I'm ready to start it. But it's your call to understand the times and know what they should do. Is that all right? Even on a snowy day. You're going to have to do some stuff when it ain't convenient. I'm going to start saving when I get the raise on my job. No, you're going to start saving before the raise come up. Is that all right? I can't say. Lord, show me how I can save. You ask the Lord to show you, he'll show you. Cut this over here, but you don't even consider that because you don't want to cut that. Because <laughs> there's some part in our life that we don't want to do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But there's some stuff that's just non-negotiable. There's some stuff that I don't just choose to do. There's some stuff I don't want to do. Hallelujah. But if you ask the Lord to open your eyes, he'll show you. He'll show you, and he'll cause you to do some stuff now. Some stuff you got to do, and some stuff I learned, you got to do it now while the Spirit has impressed it on your heart. If not, you will think about it. And sometimes you think about it too long. Or you think about it too long, and then something else come up. And then you can't do what God told you to do. But if you would have did it when he told you to do it, you would have been in obedience. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Oh, I don't know why I'm going here this month. If you do it when he told you to do it, then this wouldn't have been a distraction. Because delayed obedience is the same as disobedience. Because sometimes you miss the window. The Lord may tell you pay a bill for somebody. Do it when he tell you. I'll do it three weeks when, when that come in three weeks ago. Fool, their bill is due now. You got a word, do it why he told you to do it. Three weeks ago, the bill don't need it. See, because I found out sometimes when you're talking to God, he's talking to somebody else about you. And when you don't want to receive it, but that is the word, Tony said, I'll send men to give into your bosom. Now, the men that he's sending got to be obedient and sensitive. Maybe, maybe you want a blessing, but maybe he's raising you up to be the blessing. And to be the blessing, you need to be in season to be the blessing. You looking for an answer. Maybe you are an answer sometime. Oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Maybe you are the answer. What is the way? Maybe you are the way sometime. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then I don't be a blessing because somebody needs something. They don't look like they need something. God, why are you telling me to bless them? They don't look like, you don't give because it look like somebody's in need. You need to learn how to give so there'll never be a need. Come on here. I, I don't got to wait till the deficit to be a blessing. Come on here. And, and, and you don't know what people going through. Because everybody... <laughs> Because in this hour, broke don't look broke. That's right, and rich don't look rich. Glory to God. The sons of God are led by his spirit. 
I'm not led by what I see. Man looks at the outward appearance. And see, your problem, you always want to sow into a need. Sometimes you need to sow into good ground. I don't always have to sow into broke. I'm sowing into blessed. I'm sowing into you because you good ground. I know what I'm sowing into. You shouldn't have did that to them. You should have gave that. Don't tell, you don't tell people where to sow at. Don't deny people where to sow. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Amen. You better be led in sowing. Driving on the street the other day. One of the kids said, Daddy, he homeless. Give him something to, give, him, give him some money. Man, Lord ain't told me that right now. But I have nothing to do. That, that, that. The Lord, I'm not saying, I'm not saying. But the Lord didn't tell me that. Because you got to be led. Because everybody got a need ain't really going to do right with that need. I've seen situations that you want to bless somebody and I said, I'm not going to give you no money. I'll get you something. I don't want that. Oh, 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 I thought you, but I thought you was hungry. But, but I thought you was. i get you a piece of French's chicken. You don't want French's? I thought you was hungry. The sign said, but you don't want that. I've seen it with my own eyes. And you got to be led. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Lift your hands and say, do it now. 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 If you're under this anointing, there's anointing here to activate some things on the inside of you. There's, I know we may have been laughing and doing all that. We do what we do when we receive in the word, but we got the word. Hallelujah. And the Lord is pushing you into a place to move into what he's calling you to be. To move. Glory to God. Out of stagnation. Glory to God. To move at the potential. Glory to God. Some of you, Lord, have been nudging on you to do some things. Nudging on you. It ain't even a big deal now, but if you don't check it, it will be a big deal. Glory to God. Oh, my God. If you don't change the way you do things. Hallelujah. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It will be a threat. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So as I'm going up, as I'm trying to pursue, as I'm trying to go into some things, glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm checking the scope of my life. Glory to God. I shut that down because it's the potential. Glory to God. I didn't like the way that was going because it had too much potential. Glory to God. The potential of it wasn't right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That didn't mean me no good. I didn't need it in my life. Glory to God. My sheep hear my voice. And the voice of a stranger, what? They will not follow. Come on, lift your hands and receive this anointing today. Potentially that wasn't in my best benefit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I had to move around. I had to do something different. There was too much stress on me. Glory to God. The potential of that wasn't good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It wasn't a safe environment for me. It was toxic. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Here the Lord says, so be at peace about some of the moves that you made. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some of you are going back and forth. Did I do this right? Or did I do that? Hallelujah. God said, be at peace. Glory to God. Be at peace and be content. Glory to God. Mandalabahaya. Hallelujah. You followed me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because if you would have stayed in that, hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah. It was dangerous. Glory to God. To your health spiritually. It was dangerous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To you mentally. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So thank God for his grace this morning. Come on, there's some things I'm doing. There's some things I'm changing now. Glory to God, there's some things. In the name of Jesus. Come on, just receive this anointing. I feel something stirring in this atmosphere. 
I feel my mind. I feel a stirring in this atmosphere. Come on, just receive it. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands now and say, Lord, help me unlearn. Help me unlearn. Come on. Let's go there. Help me unlearn. Hallelujah. Come on. The struggle is real. Come on. There's tension between the old and the new. Glory to God. But come on, ask him. Help me to unlearn. Oh, Baba Yandalobo Shata. Oh, I feel breakthrough. Mandela Lalala Basaya. Handala Baba Kasaya. Handala Baba Haya. Hallelujah. 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 It's been my defense. It's been my survival mechanism. Glory to God. It's not really who I am. It's just how I've always had to do it. And now I'm in a new place. And now I'm in a new space, God. Help me to unlearn. So that my own will not complicate the new. Oh, ya baba sandala bahaya. Roba baba bakasaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I got to do it now. I can't wait till tomorrow. I got to do it now. I got to change some things now. Some of you have been falling, falling for having the weight on some. I got to do it now. In a la baba sandala bahaya. Oh, I feel the anointing. Come on, just a few more seconds. God is destroying some yokes right now. He's removing some burdens right now. This is a shift word. Glory to God. It's a shifting word. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Catch me up. Catch me up. Catch me up. Catch me up. Catch us up, Lord. Catch us up. Glory to God. Help us to be up to date. Help us to be current in what you're calling us to do. Help us to not be in a new place but still stuck. Help us. Catch us up. All of us. All of us. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 I just been playing it safe. Hallelujah. I just been safe, but there's a grace. Strength like none other. Woo. Strength like no other. Woo. It reaches word was great confirmation to some people. This word was great confirming glory to God. Hallelujah. There's been a knowing but you really haven't shifted into some things because hallelujah glory to God. But it is the potential. Hallelujah. You've been waiting on the right time. Shift now. Glory to God. You are my strength. You are my strength. Hold up behind you. Strength like none other. Strength like no other. Oh, strength like no other. No other. And it reaches to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I receive the word of the Lord. I receive the word of the Lord. I receive the word of the Lord. I receive the word.